But when I left, we're going to start the message here. When I left, and I was actually going to follow this up. When I left, I realized that I kind of, I've kind of left you hanging on Easter. I kind of left you hanging. And listen, most Easter sermons, most resurrection sermons, most pastors will, will leave you hanging on Easter. We'll leave you hanging. Let me, let me read you the Easter story. If you've got a Bible, whatever you want to use, it's Matthew 28. I'm going to read you eight real quick verses. This is the Easter story, and we didn't actually even read this on Easter Sunday, but, but this is the Easter story, and this is what is usually preached. It goes like this, uh, verse 1. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to, drawn, began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. I got to pause there because I told you, when I read the Bible, I like picture it. Do you like picture this angel sitting on that stone with like attitude? I, I do. It's like he rolled this stone away and, and the guards are there and he's just sitting there. I just picture him legs crossed or whatever, sitting there with attitude, like ah, no big deal. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. That's the Easter story. That's the resurrection story. But, but here's what I realized last week. If the story ends right there, if the story ends right there, listen, we're in big trouble. We're all in trouble. We're all in, fa in, in fact, we're probably not even here in church this morning if that's where the story ends. Christianity itself, man, I don't know if it makes it. I don't know if it makes it. If the story ends right there in Matthew 28, Christianity probably doesn't survive. At this point, right, right at this point of our story, how many of you know the disciples are a mess? These guys are a mess. They're a mess. And listen, we often pick on them. You know, doubting Thomas, you know, Peter, we... We, we, we pick on them, and they were, a, they were a crazy group of guys, weren't they? And, and, and they were actually, they were definitely a confused group of men. They really were. They constantly, constantly misunderstood what Jesus was saying. Jesus was constantly would say something, and they're like, okay, yeah. And they'd, they'd miss it completely. They were constantly asking Jesus, now, now, Jesus, now, will you establish Israel? Now, now, Jesus, can we, are we going to take over now? Are we going to take over now? They, they really didn't get it. And Jesus was constantly correcting them. And so we kind of laugh at them sometimes and joke and poke fun at them. But honestly, I don't think any of us would have been any different. I don't think any of us would have been any, any different. We can kind of laugh at them because we have the whole picture, don't we? We can look back and think, what were you guys thinking? What were you? But because we have this whole picture. They were living in the moment. They didn't know what the future looked like. We have this whole picture, so, so, so we can, we can kind of look back and laugh. But I think if we were in their, in their shoes, I don't think we would have responded any different. They were very, very confused. Um, in a second, I'll, I'm going to show you a, a video, okay? Now, I want to... I wanna, Put this out there before the video plays, okay? It's just for laughs, okay? The video, I don't have any jokes this morning for you, okay? So this, I actually have one. Just came to mind, okay? One joke and then we'll get to the video, okay? Um, my, my wife asked me why I don't buy her flowers. To be honest, I didn't even know she sold flowers. Ah, okay. I'll explain that later, okay? That one just kind of relates for me, okay? So I'm going to show you this video, but understand, the video is just for laughs. This was not the disciples' plan at all, okay? 
But I do believe this video kind of, it does kind of hint at maybe how confused these guys really were, okay? The, the video will show you how confused they really were. You might be able to see it online. We'll see how all of this goes. But remember, this is just humor, okay? It's just humor. Laugh at it. And then I'll explain why I showed it in just a moment. Let's give it a shot. Are we all here? I need 100% participation for this to work. Yeah, everyone's here. All 12, 11, 11 of us. Well, what's the plan? Well, as you know, Jesus is dead. But stick with me, stick with me, okay? Stick with me. I have a plan. We are going to steal his body. Okay, okay, I'm tracking with you. What's next? And then we're going to tell the whole world that you rose from the dead. Oh, okay. oh, you know I'm in. I love it already. <laughs> all right, classic, classic, then what? And then, we're all going to get brutally murdered. Oh! Oh, wait, 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 come again, come again. Could you go over that last part real, real quick? Oh, what, we get murdered? What's the problem? Uh. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I mean, don't don't get me wrong, Pete. I love me a good hoax as much as the next guy, right? <laughs> right? Uh, uh, what's in it for us? Do we all get riches, fame, and fortune first, right? No, no, get this. You're going to be hated, hated. persecuted, and reviled for the rest of your life! Oh! Oh! Okay, guys. Okay. Fellas, fellas, uh, look, uh, I, I, I gotta be missing something here, right? <laughs> okay? I mean, why on earth would we do this? Can, can we start over? Oh, okay, we'll start from the beginning. Everybody, for John, yeah. the beloved disciple. So, okay, we go down to Jesus' tomb. I, sounds good. This yes. is really yes. easy. Then? We pay off the Roman soldiers that are guarding the tomb with their lives. Why, Checks out. why would they do that? Then we somehow roll away the big stone that's in front of the tomb. Obviously, you have to move the rock first. Yeah. And then we steal his body. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess. Then we tell the whole world that he rose from the dead and we get brutally murdered for our troubles. <laughs> Epic break, bro. Peter, you rock. Okay, guys, and, okay, and then what? Then we all get killed. Come on. When do we see ourselves become exalted and praised? That's just it. You don't! Oh! What? 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 what is happening? Anyone hear what I'm saying? This is the most idiotic plan of all time. Chill out, bro. I mean, do I really have to explain the joke to you? Look, it's that we lie about Jesus' resurrection, and then we all die. Oh! How am I supposed to chill out when our heads are getting cut off? Or worse, what is wrong with you guys? Thomas, okay, look, back me up here. I know you can't be cool with all this. I know you gotta have some doubts. Come on. Doubts? I will never have any doubts again! Okay, okay, you guys have officially lost it, okay? I, I am out of here. I, I'd rather be exiled to a deserted island than spend another minute with you wackos. Have I got some good news for you? Uh, okay. That was actually the Babylonian bee, okay? Um, I thought it was hilarious, okay? Now, that obviously wasn't their plan, and it, but I think it kind of shows how confused they really were. And do I have any Bible nerds out there? Did you catch some of the satire and all of that? Like, Peter, you rock, okay? Thomas, I'll never have any doubts again. And, and I don't know if you know this. I know you know this because you're all Bible scholars, but all the disciples except one were pretty much, like he said, brutally killed, and none, only one wasn't, and that one was actually exiled to an island, okay? And that was John, okay? So, so there was a lot of satire in there. I thought it was really funny, but really, again, that wasn't their plan, okay? 
But I think that kind of shows, that's, how, that's probably how confused they really were, okay? I picture those guys kind of like that, just crazy and confused, okay? Now, now here's my point in that. At, at that time, at the time at the end of Matthew 28 that we just read, at that time, if the story ends there, it's over. They're lost. We're lost. Christianity probably doesn't survive. But how many of you know that the story doesn't end there? The story doesn't end there. And I think there are times sometimes when we celebrate Easter and we tell you the whole Easter story. But it didn't end there. It didn't end there. If you've got your Bibles, I'm going to read two different translations. But I'll start with New King James. Open them to Acts chapter 1. And let's read verses 1 to 3. It says this. The former account, I'm, this is Paul, no, this, I'm not even sure who's writing this, but the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself, watch this, this is after the resurrection, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering, after the crucifixion, by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, I know all of you know this, but this is for maybe somebody that's watching online. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that Jesus was crucified, was resurrected, and then there was a 40-day stretch in there where they saw him again? Where he was, he was walking and talking and even eating with them for 40 days. And I read the first translation because I love the way it says that, that with many infallible proofs. It's, it's, it's a proven fact. And I'll give you more information in a moment. It wasn't like, well, I think that might have happened. No, that happened. The story did not end at the resurrection on Easter morning. Okay. They continued to see Jesus and talk with them for 40 more days. For 40 more days. Let me read one more translation of that. This is Acts, the same, the same verses, but it's the Message Bible. It says this. Dear Theophilus, in the first volume of this book, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he said goodbye to the apostles, the ones he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. After his death, he presented himself alive to them in, I like the way it put it this way, in many different settings, different settings over a period of 40 days. In face-to-face -face meetings, he talked to them about things concerning the kingdom of God as they met and ate meals together. I don't know if you knew that part of what I'm going to call the resurrection story, but I believe, this is my belief, okay? It's not doctrine, but I believe those 40 days changed everything. I believe those 40 days changed everything. Man, at the end of Matthew 28, listen, those guys, the disciples and, and all of his followers, they were crushed. They were crushed. They were confused. They were scared to death. They were hiding. They were literally defeated, okay? They, they were lost. They didn't know what to do. They were hiding. It was a mess. The next 40 days changed everything for them and, and, and the other followers and other believers. It changed everything. The point of the resurrection wasn't so Jesus could, could, could be resurrected and say, see, I did it. I did it. I told you I would. Those 40 days actually produced, and this is what I want to teach you and show you this morning. Those 40 days actually produced something in those who saw him during that 40-day stretch. It actually produced something in them that I'm going to show you in, the, in a moment. I like the message translation because it said it's, they, they saw him in many different settings. How many of you know we see Jesus today in many different settings? And you can, you can see Jesus in your workplace. You can see Jesus in your school. Man, I, I, I experience Jesus in, I, in, in my car when I'm driving. I experienced him at home this morning in church. It, it said some of them experienced him face to face, face to face. He, they, they met with them. He, he, they ate meals together. And we know that Jesus went on a walk, which I'll share in just a moment. We know that Jesus went on a walk with two of his followers, the road to Emmaus. 
They were walking along during this 40-day stretch, and Jesus just popped up and started taking a stroll with two of his followers. Those 40 days are a picture. I believe those 40 days are a picture of what it can be like for you and I today. Walking with Jesus, meeting with Jesus, talking with Jesus in many different settings. What it produced in them, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment, it can also produce in us, amen? Now, i got to show you, I'm going to show you what it produced in them in just a moment, but i got to finish off the verse, okay? Um, Acts chapter 1, we're going to read from 3 to 8. This is continuing on from where we read. And as they met and ate meals together, he told them that they were on no account to leave Jerusalem, but must wait for what the Father promised. The promise you heard from me. The promise you heard from me. John baptized in water, and you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And soon. Now, now watch these guys, okay? This is still Matthew, the end of Matthew 28 kind of thing, okay? This is new, the first of the 40 days, okay? Verse 6. When they were together for the last time, they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Is this the time? So they're still a little bit confused, okay? And he told them, and, and watch this. I love the message translation. He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. I love this part. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. Even to the ends of the earth. I, I love that verse 7. We put that one up there. You don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. I, I, I like that verse, and, and here's why, that last one. I like to know everything. How many of you like to know everything? And even in my prayer life, it's like, God, why are you doing this? Why are you do How come this didn't happen? How come that? And, and I can equate that verse even to that. I don't get to know everything. And I think if Jesus was standing here speaking to me in the message translation language, and I'm complaining, God, how come I don't get to? And he would probably say, you don't get to know everything. But what you do get, you get the Holy Spirit. You get the Holy Spirit. Now, that's all worded in such a way that I hope you understand it. It's like, you don't get to know everything, but what you do get is more than enough. That's really what he's saying. What you do get, the Holy Spirit, is more than enough. It's more than enough. And what those guys did, not just the disciples, but his followers, what they did, what they accomplished, they could not have done without the power of the Holy Spirit. There is absolutely no way they could have done what they did risk their, give their lives without the power of the Holy Spirit. It was so important that Jesus said, don't go anywhere. Don't even try to do ministry. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere until you're filled with what the Father promised, the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't think they could have been victorious without the power of the Holy Spirit, and I don't think we can live victorious Christian lives without the power of the Holy Spirit. And we could talk about the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in, in each and every one of us, and I could spend the rest of this year talking about it, okay? And we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit in us and dwells in us as believers all the time. I don't want to do that this morning, okay? So I'm, I want to move on, but I want you to understand that that was key. That was a huge key for them, okay? But I want to show you something about these 40 days. Now, there are like, I don't know, there's 10 to 12 accounts of different accounts of people encountering Jesus during those 40 days. There's like 10 to 12 different accounts in the Bible. Um, and I'm sure, man, and when you read it and begin to understand, I'm sure there were plenty more that weren't recorded in the Bible. There was a lot of people that had an encounter with the risen Jesus during that 40 days, okay? And I, I believe I've heard somewhere that there are actual historical accounts not biblical, but historical accounts of people that weren't followers, weren't necessarily believers, but historical of accounts of people who had encounters with the risen Jesus. So it's, it's, it's even more than just Bible. It's, there's history there. And, and, and during that 40 days, it was an amazing time. So I just want to quickly show you eight of those encounters and the victories they produced, both for them and for us. I'm just going to give you the scripture for each one. 
It won't take very long at all. I'm going to give you the scripture for each one, and you can check it out later. Amen? So here's the first one. Here's the first one. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. That's Mark 16, 9, if you want to check it out. And Mary, Mary was there at the tomb, and she was down on the ground, and she was weeping, and she was crying, and she thought she had lost Jesus forever. Jesus appeared to her, and I want you to see that, write this down. Here's the first thing that, 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 that it brought to, to them and for us. He brought victory over despair, victory over depression. Mary, seeing the risen Lord during that 40 days after his death and resurrection, Mary seeing him, Mary having an encounter with him, gave her victory over depression. Now, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about some of these other ones, but how many of you would agree Mary had a pretty good reason to be depressed? Amen? Would you agree? Mary had a pretty good reason to be depressed. And I'm sure, I'm sure all of us at one time or another in our life have been depressed or sad. And I, and I would actually say you probably had good reason to be depressed. But Mary had an encounter with the risen Jesus, her risen Savior, and she left that tomb different than when she came. I want you to understand, I, I know there's going to be, man, I know, I, I, how can I word this right? I know there will be things, I know there will be people even in this life that will disappoint us and make us sad, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you this morning that, oh, when you get sad or depressed, just laugh it off. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. Be happy. That's not what I'm telling. Even Ecclesiastes, even Ecclesiastes says there's a time to laugh and a time to cry, a time to mourn and a time to rejoice. So I realize, I, I, I realize there will be times when, when, when disappointment, and sadness might come in. But listen, here's my point. You cannot let those times slip into despair or depression. You cannot let those times slip into despair or depression. Or depression. When we serve a risen Lord just like Mary did. Whatever hurts we're going through. And again, I'm trying to be sensitive because I understand we go through some tough, tough things sometimes. But whatever hurts we're going through, listen to me this morning. They are temporary. They're temporary. Now, now they, they could be temporary in this life here on earth. Some of the tough things you're going through. How many of you have ever been through something tough? I've been through a lot of different tough things, okay? And I could stand here this morning and say, thank God they were temporary because I'm, I'm not going through them still today, right? So, so on this earth, we will go through some of those difficult times, but they're temporary, they're temporary. Man, that's so important to, to get into people's heads. I, I, I get so frustrated when somebody commits suicide because of something they're going through. What they don't realize is tomorrow everything could change. Next week, everything could change. A year from now, everything could change. And we don't know. Our, everything is so temporary. It could change. You could go from poor to rich in one day. In one day. From sick to healthy in one day. From single to, to married in one, maybe not in one day. Not, not single to a, single to being in a relationship in one day. Okay, don't go from single to married in one day, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know that that's a great idea. You could go from single to married and just from single to a, being in a relationship in one day. Everything could change. It's so temporary. We just don't know. But on top of that, Whatever we go through in this life here on earth, man, it might be painful. It might hurt. I, I, I understand that. But do you realize this morning, it's just a, it, it's that fast. It's just a bleep on a map. It's, it, it's that fast. Our life here on earth compared to all of eternity is a snap. That's it. That's, that's how temporary things really are. Compared to eternity with Jesus, whatever we experience here on earth is that quick. A relationship with our risen Jesus is the prescription for depression. Amen? A relationship, an encounter with Jesus will give us victory over depression just as it did for Mary. Amen? Man, how, you realize that this morning? Isn't that good to know? I don't have to, be, I don't have to walk around depressed. 
I don't have to walk around depressed because Jesus rose from the grave and he's given me victory over depression. Number two, here's number two. Jesus appeared to the, the, the other women as they were leaving the tomb, Matthew 28, verses 9 and 10. They thought, they thought Jesus was dead, okay? But he appeared to them, and they worshiped him right there. So this is number two, if you want to write it down. Jesus brought victory over death. Jesus brought us victory over death. Because Jesus was resurrected, you and I can be resurrected. You and how many of you were here Easter Sunday? That was basically the, the message on Sunday. Paul taught, Paul taught that if, if God can't resurrect you and I after we die, then God did not raise Jesus from the grave. But we know that God did, don't we? We know he did raise Jesus from the dead. And therefore, you and I, when we die, we are resurrected. Death does not have a hold on us. There's no sting in death. We have, because of Jesus' resurrection, we have victory over death. We have victory over death. Listen, I can honestly tell you this this morning. I am not afraid of death. Now, I'm not trying to hurry it, okay? I'm not trying to hurry it. I'm not trying to get there any sooner than I should, okay? I'm not in a hurry. I like living. I like living, okay? But I actually know that death on this, in this life, Death on this life is really just the beginning of a whole new, incredible life with Jesus. Amen? So death, death doesn't scare me. Death doesn't scare me. Not, not, not in any way. Because I have a relationship with the risen Savior, I have victory over death. I am not afraid of death. Amen? I hope you can say that this morning. I hope you can. Again, not looking forward to it. Don't try to get there too soon. Don't do anything stupid or dumb. I'm not looking forward to dying, but I'm also not afraid of death because I have victory over death. Number three, Jesus met up with two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. Now, now I say disciples, but they weren't one of the 12. They weren't two of the 12. They were just followers. Um, you can find that in Luke 24, 13 to 32. And these men were walking, and they were, they were walking back home. It's called on the road to Emmaus. And they were talking about all that had happened that resurrection week around Jesus. They were talking about everything that would happen. And these guys, these guys were just like the disciples. They were so confused. These guys didn't understand what had happened. And all of a sudden, I wish I could be there, okay? You have to read it. It's, it again, Luke 24, 13 to 32. They're walking, and all of a sudden, Jesus just, I don't know how it happened, okay? I don't know how it happened. I picture, you know, they're just walking along and, Maybe he walked up behind him, snuck up on him. You ever snuck him on? Walked up behind him. Hi, guys. Oh, where'd you come from? And, and the Bible tells us that they didn't recognize him at first. But Jesus walks up behind him, and the Bible tells us that, that he talked with them, and Jesus stayed with them until they understood. It says that he opened up the word. He explained the events that had just happened. He explained what, what he was supposed to go through, the crucifixion. He explained everything to them then he was gone jesus brought them victory over confusion victory over confusion anybody else here ever been confused <laughs> you ever been confused have you ever been confused with life man i have i have you ever been confused with jesus it's true you can't say that yeah yes i can have you ever been confused with jesus you prayed for something and the opposite happened or, or, or you prayed for something and nothing happened? That's left me confused before. That's left me confused, and I'm sure we've all experienced that. Yes, the disciples were confused. The disciples were confused. But, 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 but the resurrected Jesus walked them through their confusion. He walked them through their confusion. Listen, today, right now, I may not understand everything. I don't understand everything, okay? But Jesus will walk me through any confusion just like he did the disciples. And it won't hinder me. Just because I don't understand something, it's not going to hinder my walk with God. It's not going to hinder me spiritually, physically, or in any way. Because I don't understand why somebody wasn't healed, because I'm confused about this or that. 
Jesus will walk. Jesus gives us victory over confusion so that even in the midst of that, Jesus is going to walk you through those times so that it won't hinder you in any way, shape, or form. Jesus gives us victory over confusion. Amen. Number four. I'm going to wrap it up with all of these at the end. But number four. Here's number four. Jesus appeared to 10 disciples who were hiding together. Luke 24, verses 36 to 43. It's in John chapter 20, uh, verses 19 to 25. Those disciples, these guys were hiding because they were scared to death. See, they had just watched their leader, the one running their group, they had just watched him get crucified and killed, basically murdered, okay? They knew they were next, okay? They knew they were next. Jesus comes to them during those 40 days, bless you, and Jesus brings them victory over fear. Victory over fear. How many of you like to have victory over fear? Man, I don't have to be afraid. I, you do not have to be afraid. And listen to me this morning. The devil wants you to live in fear. The devil wants you to make all of your decisions based on fear. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Jesus gave us victory over fear, amen? Now, it doesn't mean I'll never be afraid, okay? It doesn't mean I'll never be afraid, but I don't have to live in fear, and I don't have to make my decisions based in fear. Jesus gives me victory over fear. Amen? Stop making vi- decisions because you're afraid. She, the resurrected Jesus gave you victory over all fear. Amen? Let's go on. Number five. Uh, how about, yeah, number five. Jesus appears to all 11 remaining disciples. You know that Judas is obviously gone. Okay? Um, that's in Mark 16 and 14, John 20, 26 to 31. And this time when he appeared to him, Thomas was there. Some of the other times that Jesus showed up during that 40 days prior to this, Thomas wasn't with them. And if you see Thomas in the video, they're kind of like, Thomas is like, I have no doubts. Okay. Thomas is called doubting Thomas because he did have doubts. Okay. But, but in this fifth one, Jesus appears to all 11 of them. Thomas is there. And Jesus brings victory over doubt to Thomas. He brings victory over doubt. And I was trying to figure out how that would play into all of this. Doubt would probably be, to me, the opposite of truth. And because Jesus gives us victory over doubt, guess what? I can trust him completely. I can trust Jesus completely. When we read that story of Thomas, Thomas was kind of stuck there. He was stuck there. He didn't know which way to go. He didn't know how to. He was stuck because of his doubts. And Jesus brought victory over doubt and freed Thomas in that. He freed him. Doubting God or doubting God's word will definitely hinder you. Doubting God's word and doubting God is definitely going to get you stuck. You will definitely be stuck. Remember the, the devil. Remember the devil in the Garden of Eden? He came to Adam and Eve, and what did he tell them? Did God really say? Did God really say? All the devil wanted to do was get them to doubt God just a little bit. Get them to doubt what God said just a little bit. And he's doing the same thing today. He wants us to doubt God. He wants us to doubt God's word. He wants us to doubt what God said. Well, did God really say that? And maybe maybe you've prayed, maybe you've claimed some some scriptures in the word of God and they haven't happened yet. And you're and the devil will, he wants you to doubt. He wants you to doubt because if he can get you to doubt, then you won't be trusting God. That's his plan. Anytime you're going through something in your life and you can trace it back to a promise in the word of God, trust him, stand on that promise and don't let doubt in. Amen. Number six, number six. I love this one too. Um, Jesus appeared to seven disciples, including Peter, who had denied Jesus three times. That's John chapter 21. At his appearance, this was really cool. If you think, you go back and read that story. When Jesus came and appeared to Peter and he has this conversation with Peter, he literally puts Peter back into ministry, back into work. Peter had, had given up ministry. Peter's like, I'm going fishing. I'm done with this stuff. 
I'm not preaching. I'm not, I'm done. Jesus puts him back into ministry. And I want to put this one this way. He gives him victory over failure. Victory over failure. Aren't you glad about that one? How many of you have ever messed up? Am I the only one you ever mess up? Man, when you mess up, when I mess up, the devil comes along and he'll tell you, you're a failure. You're a failure. And he'll use, he'll use people. He'll use teachers. He'll use friends. He'll use enemies, workers, coworkers. He'll use whoever he can to speak through to tell you that you're a failure. You have messed up. You're a failure. God can't use you. You're, 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 you're just a mess. You're a failure. Can I give you the good news this morning? Listen to me. If God can restore Peter, he can restore you. Amen? If God can restore Peter, he can restore you. Because of Jesus, you have victory over failure. Amen? Listen, whenever you're feeling like, man, I've just messed up too much. Man, I've just totally, I've blown it complete. I'm a failure. Come back to Jesus, man. Come back to Jesus. He brings victory over failure. Last ones, because I'm going to put number seven and eight together, okay? And then we'll wrap this up. Seven and eight. Here's the seventh one. Jesus appeared to the 11 disciples at, at a location on a mountain in Galilee, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. And there Jesus told them that he had been given all power and authority. It's also where Jesus gave his followers the great commission to go out and make disciples of all men. And at the end of what he told them, he told them this. He told them that I will be with you always. I will be with you always. So Jesus gives us victory, but he gives us all power. Let me, let me wrap this into the last one. And the last one's actually really cool. I don't know if you knew this. Um, the eighth one, Jesus appears to as many as 500 of his followers at one time. 500. I, I put the, gave you the verse, but I'm not going to go there. But you can actually look it up. It's in my list somewhere. It's like uh, 1 Corinthians 15. I think it's verse 6. But it tells, us, it tells us during that 40 days, he appeared to 500 people, 500 of his followers at one time. Did you know that? Did you know that that happened during that, after his resurrection and during that 40-day 40, 40 time span? He appeared to 500 of his, of his followers at one time. And he, and he confirmed everything he had done. He had confirmed everything that he had accomplished. And, and he also told them of the promise of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus gave them victory over all things for all who believed. So I'm going to wrap all of these, back, all of these together, those two together, okay? How many of you know the, the crucifixion? Man, it, it was bloody. It was a mess. It was horrible. It was horrible. You come back from a death like that, okay? You come back from a death like Jesus experienced, and no one is going to argue whether you have all power and authority or not. Amen? Jesus came back with all power and authority. And then he tells them to go and make disciples. And the best part about Matthew 28 is, is, is the one who has all the power and all the authority so that he will be with us always. That's the part I like. The one with all the power and all the authority said that he would be with us always. And you might, you, you might be sitting here this morning or watching online and you say, with us? Yeah, us. All of us. Because if, you, if, if, if you've been listening to everything I just shared with you, he didn't just appear to the 12 disciples, to the 11 disciples. He didn't just, if, if he had... If he had only appeared to the 11 disciples, we would sit back today and we would say, well, that was just for them. That was just for them. That was back for back then. That was just for the disciples. No, it wasn't. The first two that I mentioned were women, okay? The third one was two of his followers, not, the, not a group of the 11, okay, and th that he was coming down the road with. And then 500, 500 of them. Are you seeing what I'm trying to say? It wasn't just for the 12. It was for, for anyone who chose to follow. And it wasn't just for those who chose to follow when he was alive. This is already after his death. So we're in that group. We're in that group. The one with all the power and all the authority said he would be with us 
All of us. All the time. Amen? All the time. Isn't that a great promise? And not only that, but the Holy Spirit has been promised to all, to all who believe. Guys, that's you and me. Amen? That's you and me. So listen, I'm wrapping it up. We have victory. Amen? We have victory. Do you see, and I don't know if you've ever realized this before. I don't know if you've even thought about this before. But do you see how important and life-changing those 40 days really were? You see that this morning? Man, I am not sure that we would be here this morning without those 40 days. I'm really not. Man, because they were a mess. Not just the disciples, all of them. Those 40 days of, uh, those 40 days of spiritual growth and victory came after Jesus was quote-unquote dead. Because here's my thought. We often say, well, the disciples had the advantage of physically walking with Jesus. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Absolutely. There's, There's some truth to that. But it seems like to me, after reading the whole story, it seems to me that some of their greatest spiritual growth and, and, and their greatest victories came after Jesus' death. After they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So why not us? So why not us, amen? Do you see that? I think, I think that whole 40 days played out so that we could see that, that what life with Jesus, not physical, like the disciples experienced for all those years, but what life with Jesus in the spiritual, with the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, would actually look like. And what it looked like for them was victory. And what it should look like for us is victory. Amen? How many of you, do you want victory over depression? You want victory over death? Victory over confusion? Victory over fear? How many of you want victory over doubt or victory over failure? Because Jesus is alive It's all available to you. It's all available for me, amen? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. It's available to you. Isn't that great news this morning? Isn't that great news? Man, I I, I was reading that the last week and a half, and I felt like, man, we leave people, you know, with with the Easter story, the resurrection story, and we leave, we, we, we don't really, we leave them hanging. There's more to that resurrection story than just rising from the grave. That 40 days of being and seeing and talking and eating with a dead but risen Jesus Savior changed everything for them. And I believe it shows us that we can experience the very same thing. Yes, I don't know about you, but I've never been, I've never got to visit. I've heard people to testimony, but I've never physically seen or audibly heard God's voice. I've never physically walked behind him where I could, beside him where I could literally touch him, but I've felt him walking with me. And I've heard his voice, maybe not audibly, maybe, you know, just in my spirit. But I think that's a picture of what those 40 days were kind of setting up for us. And I want you to see this morning that because of those 40 days, you and I can walk with with the risen Savior, you and I can receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us so that today you will have victory over depression. Today, when the devil tells you, when somebody else tells you you're a failure, you'll be able to rise up and say, no, I'm not. My Jesus gave me victory over failure. You're just confused. No, I'm not because my my Savior gave me victory over confusion also. Amen? I hope you're seeing that this morning. I hope you wrote some of those notes down and you can go back and check out that story. But I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for you. Because not only do we leave people hanging with the resurrection story, but it didn't end there. But I also want to tell you, it doesn't end here this morning either. It continues when you leave here. The victories aren't just for inside of this building. The victories are for you in your home, in your workplace, in your relationships. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that it did not end there. That it did not end with a a bunch of confused disciples, confused followers. But man, they had 40 days walking and talking and eating with a risen Jesus. And in the same way, because the Holy Spirit dwells in us, 
we can walk and talk with the risen Jesus. And the same victories they experienced, we can experience today. I thank you for victory over, de over depression, over failure, over confusion, over fear, over death, over all of these areas. You gave us victory. Now, Father, now, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, enable us, help us, guide us, lead us to walk in those victories. When those voices come, when, when, when those situations come that would bring depression and sadness, when those things come, help us to, to, to rise up with everything in us and say, no, I have victory. I have victory over that. And I am going to walk in that victory. And I thank you, Jesus, for that victory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, listen, the altars are open. Um, I hope you walk away with that this morning and that stays on the top of your head. I have victory. I have victory. I don't have to be depressed. I don't have to be afraid. Amen. Amen. Our God is a good God. And he's alive and well and he's dwelling in us. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Have a great day. If you want prayer, uh, we'd love to pray for you. Thank you for coming this morning. Remember to pray for Israel. Pray for the people surrounding that nation, their enemies, the civilians, the innocent. Amen. God bless you. Have a great, great week. Amen.